Hello. Um, I've been in, inspired by Babylon Seeker's most recent video where he um, responded to some questions uh, from a friend of his, um, where it's not so much a thread, but it's kind of like pass it on. Um, I didn't prepare for this. I just um, watched his and it inspired me. And I, I uh, copy and pasted the uh, questions and I'm going to attempt to answer them. I don't know that I'm going to post this. I'm just going to wing this. It just inspired me to think about these things. And I, I like, it's not so much that I liked Sean's answers, but again, Sean, you're very honest, you know, um, in your answers. And I find honesty inspiring and people being willing to share what's really going on with them is encouraging. And so I wanted to um, try these questions too. I took a look at that young lady's um, profile. She is indeed, I can tell she's a deep woman and she is beautiful too, but I see the inner beauty. Boom, right away. So let me see if I can answer these questions. All right. Th this may not go folks. I'm just, if, just so you know, I, this may not get posted. Number one, what were the most important lessons for your soul this year? The most important lesson that comes to mind is the one that I keep wrestling with and probably will wrestle with until the day I die, which is trying to go beyond intellectually understanding that the cause of all suffering is desire to fully living in that space. I mean, I, I would like to get there. I'd like, I would like to get there. And I'll try to explain. Um, not, not everyone is on the same level and on the same path, but my path seems to keep pulling me, uh, in a direction that takes me out of the, uh, the sphere of the everyday. And what I mean by that is the everyday is just going along in life and doing what's in front of you, not questioning anything and just living like many people do. You're born, you grow up. You go to school, you graduate, you get a job, you get married, you raise kids, you have a family, you find a place in your in your community, and you don't really question it too much beyond that. I've always questioned everything, and as a result, just everything that looks so acceptable to most people early on has looked really strange to me. But consequently, it's put me kind of in a quandary because it's like I've almost backed myself into a, a, a corner where it's not that I'm saying I'm different or special, but just that I'm looking at things and analyzing them so much that it's like there's been a lot of things where it's like, I don't want that. I don't want that. What do I want? And consequently, what I continue to learn and relearn is that all desire is the same. It, it has its rewards and it has its misery. And I don't know. I, 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 it seems that the only way to stop wrestling with desire is to with to stop wrestling with desire is to die. And at my age, I am thinking about mortality. It's something that comes with age. People told me this, but now that I'm 56, going on 57, looking at 60, this is it's a thought. I'm not 24, or 25, or 26. I'm 56, looking at 60 and 70. I'm not looking at 30. And you don't think what. I'm thinking when you're 20 and 30, I know this now because I'm here. And what I'm saying is the idea of mortality and thinking about that, kind of, it, it levels things. It's like, I'll find myself like, what am I struggling so hard for? You know, ultimately all I'm going to do is die, you know? So what is the big deal about desire? And so that continues to be the most important one of the most important lessons that I'm struggling with, which is to try to move beyond my desires, because the thing is, if you never fulfill your desires, you're still just fine. You know what I'm saying? And the things that I'm still desiring are really, they're not that important, but I still want them. You know, I still want the same things I wanted as a kid. Uh, I want I want to make some more records. I want to be recognized. I want to experience that. And even as I experience it, the recognition 
It's just, just not what you think it is. It's never what you want it to be, but you still want it. So that's one of the most important lessons for my soul this year. I think another lesson that I'm learning, and hopefully I'll make headway on it next year, is I got a big gate on the front of my, my uh, intimate door that's padlocked pretty shut. And I suffer, and I think other people suffer as a result too. Um, I know that it's got to do with past hangups, but it also tends to, to, to do with the way that it appears that relationships go. And I just have not been able to get my head into a different space <clears throat> to handle it better. <clears throat> and what I mean is this. I see relationships as being very selfish. The Fums made a comment recently where I said, God, thank you for in saying it. People say that they fall in love because they're in love with the other person. And there's that's partially true, but your love for that person is completely self-centered. It's what this person reflects back to you. It's what you want from them. I'm not saying that's bad, but my experience has been this. I don't really want to compromise a whole lot about, about who I am and I don't want to put up with people trying to change me and that is always what I experience in relationships it never fails and I watch it around me constantly people battling with you with each other for who gets whose idea you know what I'm saying I don't and I just I got a big wallop about it I don't like it don't even want to deal with it so I stay alone but my soul needs more I think or my body needs more or something and so that's something that uh, that's a lesson that I'm still learning my soul my body how to make the bridge physically you know it's part of life I've just really cut myself off you know I know I'm being awful honest but you guys that watch me know that I am and it's just the way it is so number two what have you had to release this year well all these answers are going to be the same. It's all the same thing. The thing that I'm attempting to release is the same thing I'm continuing to struggle with, which is to release this need to fulfill desire. So this to release this need to be heard. Now that I'm being heard more, I mean I'm heard, but I love this 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 video making, you know, about records but also about other things because I know that people will listen. I know I'm being heard. What's the ultimate result of it? Really nothing, except I'm making more friends. Has my angst reduced? Have my issues changed? No, they haven't. Because it's between me and my issues, not you all. So I'm still working on releasing um, the need to be heard or wanting to be understood. You folks that have watched my videos, you've heard me say it. I, I long to be understood. Once I get understood, it's like, what's changed? Nothing. So the answer to all these questions in some ways is the same. It's going to be the same thing. I already am realizing that. Of course, I just see the connection between everything. Everything is connected. Everything. We're all one mass of existence. We are. So what seeds did you plant this year for 2012? The seeds that I planted in 2012 were seeds for more musical growth and musical material um, output. I planted seeds this year. I thought that In Dreamer would have its full length out. We didn't. We got the single out. And um, I'm always wanting to make more records, and I planted seeds for that this year. Thanks to you, Vinyl Community, you're helping me to realize that. Um, I also planted seeds for better communication between me and my brothers and sisters. It's all, this is part of it, but also my brother moving back to Omaha, our communication moving to a deeper, more uh, honest level. Those are seeds that I've been planting this year that I know of. Um, I also planted seeds for better, uh, more honest communication with all my friends. One of my longtime friends, Craig and Jeannie, this couple, um, this year I stopped kind of chasing them. I would call them, but they would never call me. And I just finally just decided, this is stupid. I know they love me, but it's like, why am I so desperate to 
you know, and I'm not, but why am I always making sure that I go out there? They never come over here. And I love them. And we talked about this recently, still love them. But honestly, it's, it's a white couple that I've known for a long time and they won't come over to my house uh, because of my neighborhood. They won't let their son come visit me, who I love dearly, because of my neighborhood. And ultimately, am I okay with that? Ultimately, the answer is no. That's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And these are supposed to be some of my best friends, you know. And I just finally said, okay, I'm facing this. That's that's fucked up, <laughs> you know. Um, and so it's not acrimonious. We're still friends, but... I'm not chasing their asses anymore, you know. You don't want to come see me? Well, you don't get to see me. Okay. Number four, what did you accomplish this year? I think I've already answered it. Everything that, it's all the same answer. I've accomplished not consciously hurting people this year, as far as I know, except maybe some nasty comments. I've accomplished uh, keeping my job actually improving my job. I've accomplished being in more than one band and those bands continuing to make music grow. Uh, I've accomplished making a lot of friends. Um, a lot of accomplishments, you know, ultimately uh, I'm still alive. And one accomplishment I'll say is it's, it's an accomplishment and it's a little bit of a dig and I'm just being honest, you know, it is a dig at, at people around me. I feel that it's an accomplishment that I have retained a lot of what keeps me interested from my youth. And I'm digging at some of my, my friends, my age who they go to work, they come home and they sit and they watch television and that's all they do. They may as well be fucking dead. I don't understand what, you know, if the whole idea of going through these life mile markers by growing up and becoming less self-centered and starting a family and becoming others oriented to at the end of the day, just sitting on your ass 20, 30 years before you're ready to die and do nothing. What the fuck is that? So I'm glad that I've accomplished remaining in touch with what has excited me since I can remember, which is music records, music related stuff, and the fascinating part of the human personality that is artistic. Those things are perpetually interesting to me to this day. I'm glad that they are. I'm not ready to just give up and be fat and old and watch TV. The fuck is that? Five, what are you grateful for? It's the same answer. I'm grateful for this knowledge that I have. I'm grateful for being who I am at this time in my life. I'm grateful for all the people that are in my life. I'm grateful for all the people who are not in my life. I'm grateful for my existence on this planet the way it is. I'm very grateful. I'm grateful right now that I have the freedom in my job to be able to do this while also working. I'm not worried about my boss seeing a video. Oh, when did you make that video? Because they know I get my work done. You know, I could do a dig now been at that agency for 26 years. I'll go ahead and do it, actually. And I know it's not me personally, but it's been through my work. I'm one of the people that has made Community Alliance very special. And there's hardly any agencies like ours in this entire nation. We go above and beyond. You ask anyone in the state of Nebraska about Community Alliance, and you'll find out. And who's been there since almost the beginning, busting his ass in his own way to make sure that people are honored? Me. I'll take it. I'll you know, you're not supposed to do that. You know, remain humble. I am humble, but I'm going to state it for the record. Okay. So I do my work. I uphold the community. I respect people. I respect their rights. I try to help when they ask for help. I try to be supportive even when people don't ask for it. So I don't give a shit about somebody trying to say, oh, he's taking liberties with his job. I'm not. Okay. Six, what dreams and visions do you want to manifest next year? Again, it's the same answer. I, I, I definitely want to see this Derek 3 album come out on vinyl. I'd like to see more Derek vinyl come out next year or the year after. I'd like to live through next year. I'd like to live several more years. 
I'd like to make peace with the with the uh, challenge of intimacy in my life. I'm a half out of my mind because I remain alone. It's not healthy people. You people that have relationships, however good, healthy or unhealthy they are, you you know through experience that you know it's part of the balance that you need to be physical. I am not and I pay a price for it. And it's on me to find a way to loosen or change some of those thoughts and ideas that keep me kind of stuck, okay? So that's something I would like to see manifest this year is more more closeness. I have a lot of love. I I know I'm loved. I give a lot of hugs, get a lot of hugs. But I don't have like a, a, a husband and wife thing. It's been a long time. And again, I'm admitting that I'm the one who needs to do the work because... Uh, I don't want to compromise too much. I want to do what I want to do, and I don't want to fake. I don't want to say things I don't mean. You people know that you have to do it in order to keep things going. You have to say things that you don't really mean. I, I'm I'm not going to do it. And even in wanting that door to open in my life further, I'm still saying I'm not going to do it. I'm going to remain honest. I want to be with someone that I don't have to tell them what they want to hear so that we're okay. I want to just be able to just be. And if that means being alone, I could do it. I've been doing this for a long time. I can do it. Seven, what is your personal mission statement, mantra, or affirmation for 2012? It's the one I've been, it's the same one. Keep it real. Try to understand better. I like what Mr. Brazaro says, if you don't know, learn. That's part of my um, mantra too. I want to remain loving. I want to be more loving, and I'd like to uh, find my center of peace better. Um, recently, I had people, uh, when I was in a low moment, I had people trying to reach out to me, and it just caused me to do this. I hurt some people's feelings, and um, one of you, I have I think I've to spoken to, to both of you, the, in particular, and you know who you are. One, I know... Um, everything is cool with the other one. I don't know, but I, I, I want you to understand it. It's not, the, I care about you deeply. I don't mean to push you away, but I'm learning about being in a public position like this, that sometimes by being so familiar and trying to be so honest and so nice to everyone that I kind of screw up by not keeping up a healthy and safe boundary for myself, for my own soul. And um, I learned something. I kind of broke a boundary and I had to reset the boundary. And as a result, I think I've hurt, someone has been hurt by it. But this needed to happen because I broke a boundary that I really didn't want to. Okay. I think you know who you are and what I'm talking about. And I think if you're listening to this, you'll understand that I love you deeply, very much like a brother. But I had to set the boundary. Well, I need my space. Um, I just need my space. And I'm not going to change how I operate that quickly because someone else wants it. If that's not an act of disrespect. It's actually an act of love, self-love and love for you. So hope that made sense. I've talked a lot longer than I thought I would. Now that I've gotten through this, I'm going to post it and see what happens. Sean Babylon Seeker, thank you for inspiring me.